Hey there, how's it going? Today I'm going to talk about how Baldur's Gate is one of the best games in recent history. So strap in, strap on, let's go. So let's start at the beginning, the character creator. The character creator is really amazing, and I think it should be the standard for these type of games. You can choose your starting race, as well as your class. This is all standard stuff, but they do allow you to customize your attribute points or go with the recommended for your class. You may also choose a background that gives you other effects. You sadly don't have all the sliders you might see in other character creators such as Final Fantasy, so people who like the deep level of customization may find it a little lacking there. Personally, I don't use those and I kind of end up messing up my characters anyway, so I prefer not to have them. But if you do like that feature, you might find it missing here, but it might come in mods in the future or even currently. Baldur's Gate Character Creator does have various choices of hairstyles, skin colors, skin types, head type, body type, and the most notable difference is the creator has a separation of gender, body type, and genital choice. Yes, you can choose what genitals you have in a video game, which is crazy to me. You can choose a female or male body type, and some races have four different body types, but generally it is a male or female body type. You may also choose your gender between male, female, and non-binary. The system gives you the ability to completely control a character's pronouns, sexual expression, and their entire body. I think the developers created a character creator that allows for a similar freedom you would get from D&D, and I'm very happy about that. These are all things that you can definitely do and people commonly do in D&D. So now let's talk about the characters you will meet along the way. You will be meeting a lot of interesting companions throughout the game, all of which have interesting backgrounds and are completely and fully voice acted. Ah, my good fellow. Depending on how much you explore and what you choose, you may get some companions and not others. It's possible to play through the game and not even meet some characters the first time. This really makes each player's experience different, especially when you're talking to people about the game and you reference characters that they don't even know exist. These companions can also lead you down different quest lines, some of which may conflict with other companions. How you choose to treat companions not only matters to you, but for the other companions as well. And from what I've read, you can also romance companions, as in make them romance each other which is new information to me as of making this video, so I didn't even know that until right now. I wanted to point out a couple companions that you can get along the way and talk about their backstories in a little bit and see why that's kind of interesting to me. So there will be spoilers ahead, of course. Hey you. This is the demon girl Karlak that the community often refers to as the demon Dami Mommy, I believe. Her quirk is that she has an infernal engine for a heart, allowing her to go into a rage, and she's basically a barbarian, which is very interesting justification for being a barbarian. <laughs> you can learn the backstory of all these companions, and they will lead you down various quest lines and rabbit holes throughout the world. You may also romance a bunch of companions, which gives you even more information to learn about them and quests to prove your affection. Also, you can get some romance scenes. Let's talk about how you use these companions in actual combat in the game. The combat system is really fun and actually pretty complicated, but not in a bad way. During combat, the player controls all the companions as well as their own character. This allows for four controllable characters, each with their own abilities, weapons, and spells. You can choose how these companions level up and what spells or feats they have. You can also equip them with weapons and armor that might give them other abilities. At the start of the fight, you roll for initiative, which decides who acts first. During your turn, you have one action point and one bonus action, generally speaking, and as well as movement. You also have spell slots at different levels, which can be used to cast spells. This is pretty basic D&D combat system, which also comes with other actions like throwing, hiding, helping, and etc. What this leads to is a combat system that allows for the most freedom. The limit of how you fight or solve problems is not the game, but rather the player. Your imagination is the best tool to win fights, and everyone can do things differently. If you're new to D&D, this might seem a little overwhelming at the start, but once you get a hang of it, you'll realize that the biggest problem isn't the complexity of the system, but rather 
trying to come up with the best way to approach a problem when you have so many options. The sense of a completed and polished combat system is also applied to the story itself being a very well written, deep and complicated story. As you travel through the world you discover stories and quest lines all given by fully voice acted characters. Anyone you run up to in the world and talk to, there's generally going to be a cinematic and you will see a voice acted character, which is insane. Some of these quest lines are up to the player to discover while other ones you're generally directed towards. It's up to you to find all the side quests and learn more about the characters and the world. The best part is that this means each player or playthrough can be different. Your companions will react differently to various events and quests, things that you do and do not do, and you should be aware of what companions you're bringing in your party and when. These companions will also push you to learn more about them and the world. You can even inspire companions with different acts such as bravery or nature and things like that. Each quest you do can relate to a different character and can help you pick up more companions or change your relationship with them. It's this changing world and characters that gives the game life and it's a world full of a sense of mystery. I also wanted to talk about the actual size of this game. This is a huge game and well worth the $60 price tag. The world is absolutely massive. There are a lot of different zones to explore and I've been playing for hours and hours and hours and I have not even got past the first act in the game and I'm aware of at least three. From what the developer said is that completing the game can take anywhere from 70 to 100 hours. I've heard some people talk about the game taking even closer to 200 hours. Either way, 70 or 200 hours, there's a lot to do here and it's definitely worth replaying multiple times. Not only can you experience the story in single player, but you can also play in multiplayer. This functions very similar to actual D&D where you are assigned to a particular character that you can create when you start the game and you generally have to play the game with the same group of people. They can control your characters for you, but this is more like actual D&D where it's better to actually get everyone together and continue your shared campaign. During shared campaigns in multiplayer, you are not able to romance other companions, so if you do plan to play with your friends, make sure that you do your romancing in your single player game. Playing this game in co-op and going through the story is something that is a massive time commitment as well for both people, so you're pretty lucky if you can get through this entire game in co-op. That's uh, some good friends because it's gonna, you're gonna have to be with each other a lot. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of hours. For me, this game is one of the most polished games I've played in a long time. I have encountered one bug during my time playing, which was as simple as saving and loading my game to fix it. And it ran very well on Ultra the entire time, and I never had any other problems, even while streaming. I can't overstate that this game is a finished and completed game. The developers obviously spent time making a game that felt finished every second you play it. This game is an example of a team that cares about the quality of their craft first, and there is no corporate greed thrown in the player's face that we often see in games today. There's no unfinished content or glitches, cash shops to win the game or look cool. This is a game made with passion from a team that obviously loves it. This is how games should be made. I think it's time we start supporting developers that support their games and not their pockets first. This is a game that's worth playing with a development team that cares about their work. I hope you all will end up loving this game as much as I do. If there's anything I missed or you want to talk about, tell me in the comment section and I do read all of them. I appreciate you watching, subscribe, and click the bell for notifications when I upload or stream on YouTube. Make sure to also join our Discord if you want to hang out or be notified of new videos and streams. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.